Well howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing School and welcome back to another episode in our Getting Started in Fly Fishing series. You know friends, we've covered a lot of ground so far. We've got a few episodes to go, but I wanted to take a few minutes to review before we get you out there and get you started in the sport of fly fishing. If you remember back, number one on our list of six basic things was the fly rod. And the fly rod is a flexible lever that makes the job of fly casting easier. It aids in the manipulation of the fly. We have to make it act like food, remember? And then it also helps us to fight the fish. So the three variables when it came to the fly rod was the weight of the rod. And we remember that correlates to the fish we're fishing for and the size of the flies that we're trying to cast. If you remember, average Joe or average Jane is probably gonna wind up with a four weight, a five weight, or a six weight fly rod. Anything lighter is gonna be a specialty rod. Anything heavier is gonna be a specialty rod, say geared towards saltwater, pike, musky, things like that. If you're average Joe or average Jane, a four weight, five weight, six weight is probably where you're gonna start. The next variable was the length of the rod, and we wanna look at an eight and a half or a nine foot fly rod. Especially as a beginner, this is where you wanna be. And last but not least was the action of the rod. Okay, we defined that in an episode, refer back, and we know that this has to do with the fishing situation, and it also has to do with your personal casting style. Okay, and I recommend some, something along the lines of a medium to a medium fast action is where you want to start as a beginner. That's typically going to work out best for you. Anything super slow, again, a specialty type rod. Anything super fast is going to be a specialty type rod. So again, go back and review some of the first few episodes where we talked about rods. Um, last but not least, when you're looking to buy a fly rod, Buy a fly rod that has an unconditional lifetime guarantee. That's very important because you are gonna break that rod. No questions about it, that rod is gonna break, and when it does, make sure you get good service. And also buy a fly rod from somebody that knows what they're talking about. Um, outfitting somebody with the right rod is really, uh, there's a science to it, and you should talk to somebody that knows uh, what they're doing, okay? And the next thing we talked about was fly reels, number two on our list. And the fly reel uh, does just a few basic things. The fly reel, first and foremost, stores your fly line. The fly reel retrieves the fly line, whether at the end of the day and you're packing up or you're fighting a fish. And then a fly reel has a drag system to it that provides resistance when you're fighting the fish. The variables when it comes to the reels is you, you remember back we have machined versus cast, basically how it's made. We have different types of drag system in your click and pull and your disc drags. And then last but not least, you have large arbor versus standard arbor. Again, you've heard me say it before, the fly reel is pretty overrated. You don't need to worry too much about that. Just get the best one you can afford uh, and I'm sure it'll do a good job for you. There's a bunch of really good fly reels out there for reasonable prices. And then we talked about the fly line system, number three on our list. And the line system is where we're getting into really, really important stuff. And we first and foremost have the fly line backing that goes onto the reel first. Uh, backing is fancy string that fills up space on the reel and it provides an insurance policy if a fish goes further than the 80 or 90 foot, the length of your fly line. Your fly line itself, again, you heard me say this, the fly line is so, so very important. This is very, very important. Your fly line is way more important than your fly rod. A $900 fly rod with a cheap piece of crap fly line on there isn't gonna do you any good, okay? But if you get a $50 fly rod and put a decent line on there, it'll fish. <clears throat> Weight forward, Floating fly line is what you want to start off with, okay? 
Remember, there are different densities. You have sinking tips, intermediate sinking lines, but you don't need to worry about that right now, especially. 95 to 98% of everything you do can and will be done with a floating fly line. So we need to get a weight forward floating fly line in the number that matches your fly rod. And then we talked about leaders, the third part of the fly line system. And the leader, um, you have a couple of different variables. First and foremost, the length. My recommendation to you as a beginner is keep your leader approximately the same length as your fly rod, okay? We also learned that the word leader equals a tapered butt section plus a tippet, okay? Your leader looks like this, this is the tapered part that we're going to loop onto the tip of the fly line. And then your tippet is the last diameter to which you attach the fly. If your leader is, is approximately nine foot in length, I'm just going to uh, average some things out here and we're going to go seven foot tapered butt section and approximately two foot tippet. Okay. Again, this way you've always got a measuring stick in your hand so you know how long your leader is. And then the next variable is the X. Each leader will have a number on it. It'll say 2X, 3X, 4X. Remember back, this refers to the diameter of the tippet. And the diameter of the tippet, in other words, what X tippet you are using, has only to do with the size, weight, and re wind resistance of the fly that you're trying to cast at that moment. Okay, and we remember back as a, just a generalization, take the size of the fly, divide by three or four, and that'll tell you approximately what size tippet you should be using at that given moment. We took a look at some basic nomenclature when it comes to flies. And then we took a look at some of the basic accessories you need to get going. So let's sit down and take a few minutes and, and take a look at how we put this all together. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to loop your leader on, okay? Um, and I've got an episode here on YouTube uh, on exactly how to do this. I'm sure that we've got a link right up there or maybe down there. So go and watch that video and it'll show you exactly how to do this. But in a nutshell, you're going to pull your leader out and again, you've matched the length, approximately length of your fly rod and the X of the tippet you've matched up to the fly that you're gonna you're trying to cast at that moment okay and the first thing you do is pull the leader out of the package and we're gonna take this butt end, the thick end it also has a loop in the end and we're gonna kind of uncoil that and you want to take the coils out I kind of hold it between my index middle and ring finger there and this kind of prevents you from getting this all tied up in knots, which can be a hassle. So undo those coils first, and then it should just come springing right out, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this through my fingers. They do make a, a gadget called a leader straightener. I typically just use my fingers. Just don't do it too hard to where it burns your fingers. And there you go. You take the coils out of the leader, it's gonna cast better, behave better on the water. Now. If you buy a leader at a fly shop, it's typically going to have a loop in the end of it and your modern day fly lines are typically going to have a loop in the end of them. If you don't have a loop in the tip of your fly line, there is a way to fix it. Of course, I've got a YouTube video linked right there, probably down there, on how to either fix a broken loop or add a loop to a fly line that doesn't, okay? I highly recommend that you do this loop to loop connection, especially as a beginner. It just takes the hassle out of tying, learning how to tie a knot here. And then number two, that way each time you're putting on a new leader, which you're gonna do pretty often, you're not cutting back into your fly line and having to tie a knot there every time. So learn how to do this uh, loop to loop connection properly. It's really easy, but there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. You must insert the line through leader first, and then I'm simply going to double up the leader and bring it through the loop in the line. So line through leader, if you do it the other way, it forms a cutting hitch. Again, go watch uh, the video and uh, you'll learn all about that. So you loop on your leader, and now you're ready to attach the reel 
to the rod. Now, I'm not gonna go into setting up a fly reel. It's really pretty simple. The backing goes on and then your fly line gets tied on with a nail knot. There's a link to a video on how to tie the nail knot. And if you buy a fly reel from a reputable fly shop, from somebody that knows what they're doing, they're gonna do all this for you, okay? You as a beginner don't need to worry about setting up your fly reel. We'll put the backing on, we'll tie the proper knot and get the fly reel loaded up properly. Also, when it comes to setting up the reel, it's important to mention the retrieve. And it's important when you get your reel set up, uh, wherever you're buying it, if somebody's putting the line on there for you or wherever you buy it, you need to specify whether you want this reel right or left hand retrieve. And most of the industry these days, if you are a right-handed caster, you're gonna hold the rod in your right hand, you're typically gonna want a reel with your left hand. And the reasoning for that is, if you're casting and fishing, uh, you want to be able, when you go to set the hook, you want to be able to keep tension on that fish and then reach up and reel with your left hand. That's the way that most of the industry does it. If you're a left-hander, you want to reel with your right hand. Really important that you tell the folks setting up your reel whether right or left hand retrieve. Now, before we get a, a bunch of comments, there is no right and wrong way to do that. If you want to cast with your right and retrieve with your right, that's fine. Um, just make sure that you tell, tell the people setting up your reel which way you want to do it. But you're going to have to install it onto the rod, okay? Really easy. Every fly rod has what's called a reel seat, and you've got a little kind of space there where the reel foot slides right up into. Then you have a kind of call it a slider ring back here, and it also has a space that slides right over top of the reel foot. Now we're going to simply screw down one locking ring and we just want to kind of get that finger tight you don't want to pull out the vice grips and crank that down and then the locking a little less tight so you don't have to crank that down this locking ring helps to keep it in place and with minimal amount of tightening this should hold up throughout the course of the day and the reel doesn't come off okay now you're ready to put your fly rod together and there's actually a right way and a wrong way to do this, believe it or not. And of course, I refer you to this video right here or down there to get the full scoop. But basically, you want to put it together by the tip section first. And what this does is it allows you to uh, always be putting the ferrules together in this nice, comfortable workspace. And then you're not having to move around and put the rod on the ground, etc. The rod butt on the ground. And when most people go to put the fly rod together, they usually line up their alignment dots or line up the guides and they jam it so until it just comes straight down and in. Well, that's easy to come apart and it may come apart while you're casting or worse yet if you got a fish on. You can prevent that from happening by twisting a quarter of a turn as it starts to tighten. Again, watch that video on how to properly put a fly rod together and that'll, that'll help you out. You see how I'm able to put it together right here in my comfortable little workspace, which you'll hear, you'll hear me talk about a lot. And then uh, my rod doesn't have an alignment dot here for some reason, so I've got the reel on already, which you just learned how to do. And then I line that guide up with the reel. Now you're gonna pull off a bunch of fly line off the reel. And two things you wanna do on a regular basis, uh, and nobody ever does this but stretch your fly line. Most fly lines have about 15 to 20% stretch and stretching your line on a regular basis is gonna help it perform better. Uh, it's gonna shoot through your guides better. It's gonna lay on the water better. It's just gonna cast better. I can't say enough about stretching your line. And then you wanna get yourself a line cleaning kit. Several companies make them. The best I've seen is from Scientific Anglers. It's a, like a cleaning pad and then a solution. And you wanna regularly clean and dress your fly line. It's gonna make a big difference in how it casts, on how it floats, how it lifts off the water. And most of all, you, you can double the life of your fly line if you clean and dress it on a regular basis. Now, when you finally go to string up the rod, uh, I see a lot of people who take their tippet and they try to come, start coming through the guides. Well, guess what? First of all, I can't see that. And then secondarily, as you're coming through, 
you're going to let go of it and it's going to come spiraling all the way back and through. So take the tip of your fly line, take the tip of the fly line and double it up like this. And then it's really easy to bring it through. And then when you do let go of it, it does slip out of your fingers. It doesn't come all the way back and through. Okay. This is going to make you look like you know what you're doing. Make sure you get all of the guides. They are there for a reason. And now you don't have to bring all of that line through the tip. You should be able to just wiggle the tip and it comes right out and you're ready to make a cast. Okay. So we've looped our leader on. Uh, the leader comes complete with a tippet, as you already know. Now you're ready to tie on a fly and go fishing. You're going to tie the fly on using a clinch knot. There's the video right there. Watch that to learn how to tie a simple clinch knot. And then you're going to fish. The only other thing you need to worry about is eventually as you tie some flies on or get flies caught in the trees, you're going to have to add some tippet. And the knot that you want to use for that is called the surgeon's knot. There it is right there or down there. Super simple knot. So there's really only two knots as a beginner. You've looped your leader on the tip of the fly line. That's simple loop to loop connection. You're going to have to use the clinch knot to tie the fly on and you're going to do the surgeon's knot to add tippet. So next week we're going to take a look at basic fly casting and then you're really, really, really close, friends. As always, thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, let me know. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. We still have a lot coming at you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.